Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at the Amazon Echo Show. This is a new device from Amazon that uh, integrates their voice functionality, very similar to what we've seen on their Echo devices, where you can uh, talk to it and get things done, and now it's got a screen built into it, so it can do and show a little bit more, perhaps, than the prior edition devices can do. However, it's fully compatible with all of the other Amazon Echo stuff you're already doing. So the voice commands that you might be using on one of their speakers uh, will work on here, but now you've got a screen to do a few more things, which we'll be exploring here in this review. Now, I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's take a closer look at the hardware now. It's a, a pretty basic looking device here. You've got a seven inch display. This is running at 1024 by 600. It is a touch display, but this is designed to be operated with your voice like other Amazon Echo devices are. So I could just say to it, for example, Alexa, what's the five day forecast? Here's the weather in Berlin for the next seven days. And now that we have the screen on it here, we have the ability to actually see. Let me uh, shut her up here. Uh, we have the ability to actually now see what the forecast is versus just having to listen to it. So it does add kind of a visual cue to things. And I can swipe around on some of the responses here to get a little more information. So it is a full touch display here. So uh, we'll take a look at a few other cool things that it can do. But everything the other Echo devices do, this does. So if you have skills set up, that's what they call the extensions for it, uh, to work with light bulbs or other smart home devices. This will just integrate in with the rest of everything that you do. And everything that you're talking to your device about uh, will get logged on their app also. So it will just really integrate in with whatever Alexa devices you already have uh, functioning on your network now. Uh, 1024 by 600 display at seven inches. Not the highest resolution display, but I think it's good enough for what they've implemented here. The speakers are in the front and they actually sound better than the original Echo does, primarily because they are uh, forward facing. And this is a device that's not cylindrical. It is a flat uh, facing device and the speakers only go in one direction. And I think that helps make it uh, a better sounding device. It's very clear and crisp, a uh, really good range of sound. And there's actually some uh, depth to the uh, casing that it's in here. It's a little on the larger side for a device like this, but I think that actually helps the sound so they can put in some larger speakers here uh, and make it work. It's pretty Spartan here on the back. Just the power cord goes in. There's no video outputs or anything like that. Uh, the microphones are on the top here. And like the other Alexa devices, it can hear you from across the room uh, quite easily. So it will function, I think, just as effectively as some of the other ones that I've used. And there are some controls on the device, not many, but enough to uh, do what you need to do with it here. So you have a mute button here. And when you push that button in, uh, you'll get a, a change on the display here. So it'll light up red. And you'll also get a red indicator at the top of the device. Uh, it will also turn off the camera too. So if there are uh, people trying to call you, uh, they first of all won't be able to talk to you, nor will they be able to see you when that uh, mute indicator is activated. And there's also a volume rocker up and down there as well if you want to adjust the volume uh, as you're going with it. And uh, one of the big features of this one is the camera that is on the front of the device here. And uh, you can actually make calls with it. And uh, we're gonna call now Elias Saba from uh, AFTVnews.com. He's got a great website that covers all of these devices. He just got his in today. So we're gonna test a video conferencing call with it uh, right now and see how it works. So let's give him a call and see what happens. All right, so we're gonna initiate the call here. Alexa, call Elias Saba. Okay, Elias Saba. And we have him in my phone's uh, directory already. So that's how it knows where to find him. And because he's got his phone linked in, we're good to go. And I think he is here. There he is. Hello, Elias. How you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Lon. Doing good. So you just, you, got, you just got your Echo like five minutes ago, so you can't evaluate it yet. <laughs> yeah, no, not yet. I literally just plugged it in, went through the long updates, went through the long setup. But uh, so far, it's so good. <laughs> yeah, it's working OK. One of the things that we just talked about uh, offline was the fact that uh, because the, um, the camera is angled the way it is, you can actually look at the screen, and it doesn't look like you're not looking at the person you're talking to. So I thought that was pretty well implemented. Yeah, yeah, we were just trying that out where we were looking at the camera, looking at, looking at the eyes, and you really can't tell. I mean, we're both sitting about, what, a foot or two away from the device. And if it's, if it's sitting on a countertop, I would imagine it's, you can't even tell. You know, you can tell less than that. So it's, it's you know, pretty, pretty well designed in that, in that sense. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's working OK. Well, very good. Well, thanks, Elias. Glad, glad we could do a test call real quick. And uh, where can people find your website? It's AFTVnews.com. I'm um, getting the, uh, the Fire TV Edition television in, uh, in a few hours, actually. So I'll be doing a lot of 
a lot of write-ups, a lot of articles on that. So if people are interested, they can check that out. Definitely check it out. Great. Thanks for the call. So there you go. You can see how easy it is to make a call on the device. What you have to do, though, first is get the Amazon Echo app installed on your smartphone and attach your contact list to it so that it can uh, go out and find people who also have that app installed or are running with an Echo device. Now, if Elias just had an audio-only Echo, uh, I would just have an audio conversation with him through this. But it also connects up with the app running on smartphones. So you can have a video conversation with anyone, uh, provided they have the Amazon Echo app installed on their particular smart device, whether it's a phone or a tablet. So there's a lot of flexibility uh, to those calls. And I really like the angle of the camera because, as I mentioned on the call, even when I was looking at the screen, uh, Elias said it looked like I was looking at him, which is not always the case with a laptop call, for example. Now, one thing you should be concerned about, though, is a feature called drop-in. Uh, thankfully, this feature is not on by default, but the app was pushing me to enable it. What this would let me do as the dad of the house, for example, is basically barge into my uh, Echo devices in the home unannounced. In other words, I can make a call uh, without anyone having to answer it. So I could just show up on the screen and start seeing everything that's going on in the house uh, without anyone having to give permission or answer the call for that to happen. Maybe that works in some family environments, but I think that's an issue that people should really be giving some thought to because apparently uh, people who are attached to your Amazon account uh, as a family member, even if they don't live with you, uh, would be able to barge into your home in the same way. Elias has a great article about this link down below in the video description so you can learn more about it. My advice would be to leave the drop-in feature off. Now this is early days for this product, so the video conferencing I think is one of the more interesting features, but there are a couple of other things they're doing here to integrate the screen into other functions that their other uh, Echo devices can do. So for example here I'm playing some music and it's actually uh, running the lyrics to the song in sync with the song that I'm listening to so I could sing along for example as uh, one thing that you can do with it. Now it does have some YouTube integration but it doesn't work quite as well as a, a TV box might so there are some limitations here but let me show you how it works. Alexa show me some technology reviews on YouTube. So it's bringing up a search result here now from YouTube. I can tap on any one of these things and watch them, or I can uh, give Alexa the number of the video underneath the result here to play back. If it has a good degree of confidence as to what I'm looking for, uh, it will just go ahead and play that immediately through YouTube. But there are some contextual issues here because if I uh, decide that, you know what, I don't want to watch YouTube, I want to watch a uh, Amazon Prime movie, and let me look at maybe Star Trek Beyond here. Uh, Alexa, play Star Trek Beyond. So rather than going out to Amazon Video to play the movie, it's actually finding me uh, a result from YouTube here, a clip of the movie, but not the movie itself. I have to leave YouTube uh, and then make the request again in order to get that movie to play back. Now what you can do here is slide down from the top, uh, hit home, and now if I say, Alexa, play Star Trek Beyond, it will go out now to Amazon Prime Video where I can watch that as part of my account this month here and it plays back right where I left off. So there are some things that might get tripped up. It might be uh, thinking because I was in YouTube that I wanted to watch the YouTube clip versus the actual movie. So there are some things here that uh, you might run into along the way. I did find though that if I was playing back a YouTube video and asked that same question, it would leave the YouTube skill and go over to uh, Amazon Prime Video to play it back. So it doesn't, uh, it's a little off at the moment. I think they can probably fix that through some software updates. But although it does have some ability to navigate around, uh, there are no apps on this. You can't go to an app store and grab Netflix, for example. So it doesn't do Netflix. It doesn't work with TV tuner apps, which is what I was hoping it would work with for a network TV tuner, for example. I use those HD home runs, and in full disclosure, they're an occasional uh, sponsor here on the channel. But on many other devices, I can download their app and then just start playing back my live television broadcast. And this would be a perfect device for that. Uh, but there is no app to store to speak of. All you can do is add Alexa skills, which are extensions of their uh, Echo uh, software. So there's really just no app store that you can go out and grab stuff for. So no Netflix, Amazon Prime Video of course works on here, but uh, you will be very limited as to what you can install on it, which is unfortunate because this is actually a pretty powerful device. It is running with an Intel Atom Cherry Trail processor, uh, the same chip that's found in many mini PCs that we look at here on the channel running Windows. So although this can't run Windows, it's capable of it. Uh, so it can do a lot more than what it's doing now. So I'm hoping they do add in some ability to bring some apps to the equation because having the screen here makes this a really useful kitchen or 
other living space kind of device, and it feels a little limited to me that I can't do more with this screen than I can right now. Now, while these Echo devices don't have an app store, they do have something called skills, which are uh, ways to attach your Echo devices to uh, services that are available on the internet. So uh, what they have been doing here for the new Echo Show is integrating video into the mix. So what I did earlier was I installed the CNBC flash briefing so that uh, when I ask it for my news update, I will get some video in that update here. So let's ask it now. Alexa, show me my flash update. Now, on a traditional Echo device, this would be audio only. It might be playing back something from a radio station, for example. But uh, here I'm actually getting a video that CNBC is providing to Amazon that will play back uh, like I used to see only in audio form on the other Echo devices. So it's getting there, but uh, not as simple as installing an app to get what you want. Now, like other Amazon Echo devices, these things are always on and listening, and they're listening for the trigger word. After the trigger word is issued, everything you say after that gets transmitted to Amazon servers to get translated from uh, your voice to text so that their servers know what to do with what you're asking it to do. Uh, they also keep a recording that's accessible on your smartphone afterward as well. So it will record every command that you send into the mothership there. So just keep that in mind, especially if you are concerned about privacy. Another thing to keep in mind is that this display tends to keep itself on when the microphone is not muted. So it's very bright. It will be on all the time, which surprised me. It doesn't seem to ever turn itself off. I do think the devices have some ability to know when somebody is in the room. So I would imagine perhaps in the future, and maybe I'm just not seeing it now, uh, it will shut the display off if it doesn't sense anybody in the room. But as far as I can tell, the display stays on constantly. You can tell her to turn it off, so she'll do that upon request. Uh, but you want to go into settings, though, if you really want a completely blank display display because uh, by default it will put a clock on the display here in the corner and it's not all that bright but it will glow especially in a dark room so if you want everything off uh, disable the ambient clock and ask Alexa to turn the screen off and that should uh, be okay unless a call comes in or something like that I also found that if you hit the mute button here after a few minutes it will also dim the display to that clock or turn it off completely if you have that uh, ambient clock feature disabled on it so all in it's a, a Amazon Echo device that has a screen and I think the Echo uh, platform has become much more useful than it was when I first reviewed it a couple of years ago in fact I was kind of scratching my head as to what the purpose of it was back Back then but now it's a lot more relevant and I think the screen here does add some new dynamics to the mix but I'm very disappointed that you can't install uh, even the Amazon Fire TV apps on here for example because I think that would really make this a very useful kitchen counter computer uh, so that you could load up apps like the TV tuning thing I mentioned Netflix and some other things uh, right now it is very limited in, as to what it can do especially on the video side uh, some of the Amazon skills for example will integrate uh, some graphical responses to your questions. You had the lyrics thing, as you saw, but uh, there's really not a lot of compelling stuff that uh, would make me say to someone they have to run out and buy this thing right now. It does sound great. The speakers are very nice on it. So if you're looking for a Echo device and think you might have some use for a screen, then it might be worth looking at this one over the audio only version. But uh, for the moment, at any rate, this doesn't really feel to me like something that uh, is fully baked yet. And I think a lot of it's going to depend upon the developer community to develop some of these skills for the device to add uh, function to it and that's what really got the Amazon Echo platform cooking in the first place was developer support and support by uh, all these third-party internet sites that uh, really added so much to it including all the smart home stuff as well so they're getting there with this and it's certainly a good starting point and it already does everything the existing echoes do but uh, at the moment it doesn't feel like a compelling purchase for me but uh, my opinion on that might change in a few months when developers really start thinking about how to integrate the screen better but I really do hope they add some app functions functionality to uh, add Netflix and a few other things that I would like to install on it. So that's going to do it for my review of the Echo Show. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below, and we'll see you next time. This is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Cody Falk. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.